let's create a project. And then I can do a new project here, or I can do a file new project. And uh, you should have different uh, programming languages over here. Of course, uh, you want to choose Visual Basic. And you can expand that to see what options are available. A classic desktop, um, test, then uh, this Visual Basic shows these. And if I want to choose a Windows Forms application, I choose this first one, which is the one we want. And you give it some kind of name. Now here's the important part to note down is the location. So the um, this would tell us where the, the all the files are located at. Now I'm going to name this something so I can easily identify it. Users, Haze, OneDrive, Documents. Actually, let me do a browse. Instead of trying to remember all that, I'll make it put into another, another uh, folder. Uh, assuming I can figure out how to use Windows 10. Um, Oh, this PC. Okay, then I'm going to choose my C drive. And then I'll choose um, oh, this, this folder here. Okay. And um, select that. And then I got this Windows application one, but I'm going to call this uh, the um, area calculation. And then I'll click OK. Okay, it pops up here with our blank form. And you should have your toolbox over here. If you don't have your toolbox, if it's got closed somehow, like if I click the X here, then there's always two places where you find this in most packages, either under the view or under the window. If I go over to the view, in this case, you see there's toolbox. Now you can pin this right here, or um, unpin it to hide or auto hide, such that when I'm off of it, it'll disappear. So like if I choose that, then when I'm not on it, it disappears. But if I put my mouse on it and click, it'll appear. I like mine pinned, so I'll have that there. Now over here is a properties. And again, with uh, properties, you can have it showing or not showing, pinned. Uh, if you don't see properties, and it's either under window or view, you'll see how to put it there. Um, I don't know where properties is at, to be honest. View, other windows, toolbox. Hmm, I'm not seeing properties. I've never had it disappear. Oh, here it is. Properties window. Okay. Now, if I want to drop something on there, then I, um, I'm looking for the text box. Here it is. I can double click on that, have it appear. I think you can even click and drag it on there and have, have one drop on. Okay. And um, this is where they would enter in information here. Let me see, I'll figure the area of a triangle. Uh, area is equal one half times base times height. So I need to label these somehow. And I'll label them with a uh, one that's called label. So I'll double click those. As I move them up, you'll notice guidelines appear to, to line up everything. And those are helpful. I'm just clicking my left mouse button and holding down and dragging these to where I want them to go. Now maybe I don't want that to say a label two. I want it to say um, base. So if I click this one time, now if you click it twice, uh, that'll go into code. You don't want to do that. It's not a big deal if you do. You just simply click this design tab right here and it takes you back. Okay, so I got label two selected. I'll come down here to the properties and you see there's one called text. And so I can change this to base. And then I'm going to click this label one one time and I'll uh, give this a name. Height. Okay, now uh, they're going to enter the base and height in here. They'll click a button and then I will return the, the answer. 
So I'm going to have a button here. Double click that to get that added on. And I'm going to have a label and another label. Now this first one is going to be the title for my area. So I'll come down here. And I'll choose this or change the text to area. Now this is going to be where my answer is going to be at. And I'll change that here in a minute. Got to line that up. There it goes. Now I need to give these names. Now by default, if I click this one time, it's got a name called text box one. That's not very meaningful. If you scroll clear to the top, you'll see the name says text box one. So I'm going to name that TB underscore base. The TB stands for text box. Then the height, I'm going to change its name to TB. TB height. This is going to be my answer, but it's also going to be my area. It's a label, so I'm going to call it LB underscore area. It's important you give these uh, meaningful names. Now, I don't want this to say button one, so I want to change the text property of it. Do not get overwhelmed by how many properties are here. You'll find the majority of them you will not use. And I'll change this to say, I don't know, calculate. Now, if I just click the outside of all those those items there, those are called um, controls, then it selects the form itself. You see it says form one up here. If I change the text for that, I can say triangle calculation program. And then up here, you see it says triangle calculation program. Now this, I currently have the same label for, and that isn't a very uh, user-friendly thing to appear, but I'm going to make it invisible to begin with. And how we do that is we click the label for, and you see how we have visible here says it's true. If you double-click that, it'll change it to false. Okay, now let's run this. I'll click the start here, or um, you can do a debug and start debugging here or it looks like you can put F, push F5 but I'll click the start button it'll build this looking for errors we haven't put any code in so probably no errors and here's our program now maybe I want that to be a bigger bigger screen so I can come over here and resize this by grabbing those little corners and resizing it maybe these I want them to be be larger so I can uh, I highlighted everything. How I did that is I clicked and held down my left mouse button and dragged and corralled all these together. And probably under font is the uh, size I'm guessing. Yeah, there it is. So 8.25. I can change that to 18. And I click out of this. Okay, and that's a little bit bigger. and I'll resize my button for calculate I'll move that down there move this right here okay now if I run this yeah, I see more of my title there and I see this and I don't got it centered right but that's okay we haven't put any code behind the calculate button yet but that's uh, our basic um, basic form Okay, now when we click a button, what we want to do is we want to get the values that they put in for base and height and calculate the area. So I'm going to double click calculate. Now when you double click, it'll, it'll program the most common action. And the most common action for a button is for you to click it. There's other ways you can do that. Instead of double clicking it, you have the button chose here. And over here you see some different, um, different items across the top. And specifically, there's one that says events. And these are all the different items you can program for a button. You can drag, leave, doc changed, enter, font changed, give feedback, key down, key press, key up, mouse down, mouse enter. Mouse enter is like when your mouse goes over it. 
and mouse leave is when your mouse goes off of it. So there's a lot of different things you can program. But anyway, we're going back. I'm going to click this form one here to go back to the code. Okay, so and we want to bring in the uh, base. We want to bring in the height. And we want to calculate the area. Now, um, we'll talk more about the dim, but that that uh, declares the variables. Now, I'm not saying what uh, type they are yet. We'll go into that later on. But I'll just say base is equal to, and uh, it was TB underscore base. Now, when, when you start typing TB, notice what comes up. And then I can just do a tab if it's the one I want. Our height, we can do TB, and then I can do a down arrow to the height and do a tab. And then our area is going to equal to base times height. Now times is done by an asterisk. Okay, so we got base and height from the form. We calculated the area. We then want to write it out to this control right here label for which we renamed as LB underscore area. So if I come here, I'll do LB underscore area dot text. This text is where we put what it, what it says is equal to area. Well, there's some issues with this, um, but uh, let's run it and see. Okay, so I put in four here, put a five in here, click calculate. Now we get an error, and you got to learn how to interpret these errors. It says um, additional information operator asterisk is not defined for type text box and type text box. And you can click continue or break. Usually break is what you want to do. Um, now this right here breaks out of the code, and we can do the little square up here to actually stop the debugging. Now what it's telling us is this right here is coming in as a string because uh, oops. now it'll be coming in as a string when I did the TB underscore base I should have referred to dot text um, that retrieves what's what the text says okay now we should see it a little bit different but we still got some issues I click calculate and see how it's not coming back now what you can do with debugging and we'll get into a lot more of this but it is if your codes not working right then you can come down here and you can click oops click the right here I guess it puts a little red circle uh, I'll put it here and now I'm gonna click start put in 20 and put in 2 and I click calculate comes back and tells you what everything's equal to and currently base is not equal to anything from a mouse over it says nothing now you can do a debug and uh, step into F11 and it'll um don't make a step over property <laughs> You want to continue to be notified? No. Okay. Okay, so it went past that code, went down to here. Now base is now equal to 21 from mouse over it. Okay, so that's good. Now I'm gonna do an F11 again. Put my mouse over the height and it says it's two. Okay, so that seems reasonable. So I'll put my mouse here, it says base is 20, height is two. You can also see those values um, somewhere down here. There they are, base and height. Let me do an F11 again, and now we cal calculate area, and area is equal to 40, and that's what it should be. 20 times 2 is 40. We haven't put the one half in there yet, because um, I want to talk more about that. Okay, and then we'll write it out to the, um, the answer. So if I do an F11, does that, and from a mouse over it says text is 40. Okay. So let me stop this. I'm going to click a little square up here. Stop debugging. To get rid of this uh, little red circle, that's called a breakpoint. You just click that one time and it takes it off. That helps you to, to walk it through 
line by line to see what's going on. And I'd recommend that you get used to that very early on. I didn't used to teach it until like third or fourth week, and then I realized it's actually beneficial if, if students uh, hear that early on so they can then learn how to use that feature. Well, remember we set our, our, our label here as invisible. We said visible is equal to false. So after I write out my code to it, then we're going to say lb underscore area dot visible is equal to true. And then it'll make it so you can see it. So let's run that. Click calculate, and you see we get 40. If I change this and put 32 in, it was a 64 and so forth. Now part part of the problem is though is this is very weak weak programming. Uh, there's programming languages that are strongly typed where you have to tell specifically what type of variable it is. Don't worry about that overly right now, but but realize there's some problems with just bringing in like I've done here. Saying dim can be anything. The base can be a number, it can actually even be a string. Let's see what happens when you run this and you put A and B in here. And click calculate. Uh, it says uh, conversion from string A to type is not valid. Um, so I'll go ahead and continue. So there's some issues there, but like I say, we'll talk about it. Now, now I want to talk about the one half. In some programming languages, not, to be honest, I don't remember what Visual Basic does. If I do one divided by two, and then times base times height, that seems reasonable. But some programming languages will do integer division here, which means it'll do one divided by two integer-wise. And if you did one divided by two, that gives you a zero with a remainder. Uh, so it takes zero times base times height. Okay, now let's try that and see. To be honest, like I say, I don't know. This will give me 40 times a half, should give me 20. Okay, so that's working fine. On some programming languages, you simply have to do a dot zero on each one of these. And this forces it to be to do not integer division, but just to do uh, float what's called a floating point uh, division, where you got um, decimals. I don't think that actually change our results any when I do this. Yeah, we get 20. Okay, now I'm going to um, exit out of or close this, I should say. Um, hmm. Let me do a save as. I just want a little, okay, Dell me. Okay. I'm not going to save it. I'll do a file close now, close solution. If I um, if I go to that um, that directory, you're gonna see a folder for your uh, project. And if I double click it, you can see some files. Double click this, you'll see more files. Double click this, you see a lot of different files in here. Reason I'm showing that is when you turn in a project. You want to be back here at the main directory, and you just right-click on it, and you say send to a compressed zip folder. And then once that comes up, you just press enter, and this is the file you want to upload. Do not try to upload the individual files. I will never be able to get it to run. Uh, zip up the main folder and upload this file. Now, if you do not see these extensions on here, um... On Windows 10, if you go to View, you see where it says File Name Extensions, you want that checked so you can see it. It's different on Windows 7. You still have to... Well, if you can't find it in Windows 7 and you Google it and can't figure out how to display your file extensions, let me know. Uh, it really is beneficial to know what's what. Otherwise, both these say Area Calculation. But this one says File Folder and this one says Compressed Zip Folder. But that's our first um, first example.